My name is Jasmine. I have been in the fashion sports entertainment world for about 15 plus years now. I style athletes like Alex Morgan, Michaela Schifrin, um, Katie Ledecky. I've worked with Chris Epps Porzingis, Carmelo Anthony, um, just to give you guys a little bit of background about where I come from. Um, I did start with the whole music scene. So Camila Cabello was a client of mine, Kesha way back in the day, if I'm not aging myself, if people <laughs> still know who she is. So yeah, uh, so I'm super excited to be here and chat all things, you know, sports and fashion. Welcome to the second episode of the Did You Play Sports video podcast. Jasmine is a celebrity and athlete stylist, and I'm so excited to hear more about her journey into the fashion industry combined with her love for sports. Um, hi, Jasmine. So great hi, to Jordan. see you. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, well, Jasmine, I have to ask. I did play sports. So I grew up playing um, soccer and running track. So soccer, I started playing when I was in about third grade, which nowadays is like, which is so crazy. Nowadays, that's so late to get started playing a sport. And then track, I started in first grade. Um, and then I continued, uh, you know, running and playing through high school and college. I did the whole Junior Olympics, ODP scene. Um, didn't go further after college. Uh, got a couple injuries, but to be honest, like I wasn't at that level. Um, but it's very interesting because during college, I didn't realize that there was a place for sports aside from actually playing professionally in the working world. So I went to school for fashion. And then, like I said, those two just merged naturally and organically. Do you still play ever for fun? I don't. I can't. So about five years ago, I had double hip surgery. So oh, wow. because of that, I still feel like I'm in an 80 year old body. So I can't run anymore. Um, I mean, I'll go out and kick the ball with my son and, you know, stuff like that, but mainly my exercise now, um, which is tough for me because I want to be fully, fully active, but it's usually yoga, the Peloton, um, stuff like that. So unfortunately I can't play. I hear about all these women's leagues, and friends that I have that are playing and I'm like, oh, I wish, I wish I could. But then I couldn't walk for four days after if I played. So. Right. And you want to be able to pick up your son and be exactly. you know, active with him. So exactly. um, I, I totally get it. I I mean, there's so many things. My husband was also an athlete. So we met, you know, through the whole soccer world. My son is a soccer player and a baseball player. So being an athlete still encompasses like who I am today. I think that I grew up with so many great values that were instilled in me, having been an athlete that I'm taking now through my adulthood, everything from hard work to loyalty to how to be a team player um, with what I do. So there's so many aspects of being an athlete that I still feel like carry through, even if it's not the actual physical part of it, it's so much of that mental aspect too. So I grew up just loving fashion. My dad is from Italy and my mom is Spanish. And so growing up, um, we traveled a lot and I was exposed to like a lot of that fashion culture, especially in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom was also a Pan Am flight attendant. So she would come home like with all her little things from, you know, overseas. And I, you know, fell in love with the fashion piece of culture. You know, styling wasn't a big thing growing up. I just knew that I loved it and I wanted to go to school for fashion. But of course my mom, I was just like, you're not majoring in fashion. Like you can always go into fashion no matter what you major in. So I actually majored in journalism, which was great because after college, my first job was at Cosmopolitan Magazine in the editorial department. Um, and that's where I got my first tape, taste of fashion being a real job. So I met girls in the fashion department and I'm like, this is amazing. Then, you know, one thing led to another a position open in the fashion department. I interviewed for it. I got it. And then stylists would come in and 
back then it was like stylists or editors um, were made, especially in New York, were mainly just magazine based. So these stylists would come in. I'm like, that is such a cool job. Like I didn't even know this existed. So again, another opportunity opened with a stylist freelancing. So I left the magazines and I went and interviewed with her, ended up assisting this freelance stylist for five years and really getting a taste of what was out there in the styling industry. Magazines, celebrity, commercial, there was so much. From there, I just started working with different stylists in different capacities of the fashion industry. So I would go to LA a lot and assist on that celebrity side, You know, met some athletes, which is where I essentially found my um my niche and now here here I am <laughs> no because I always knew there is a way to merge the two and I think working with some of these clients it just opened their eyes to well I don't always have to be in like cool sports where I can wear like pretty dresses and still be badass so wow. I liked bridging the two and like and it's funny because I'll get people nowadays and be like you were an athlete like you dress up and you're a girly girl I'm like yeah, <laughs> I can be a girly girl and I can still be tough as nails on you know playing a sport and you know doing whatever so I think it's kind of cool to open other people's eyes to that too you don't have to be one or the other you can you can be both and I think in today's society like it's real like people are really seeing that now like with the NWSL, you see so many game, like pregame photos of the girls and they're getting dressed up and they're looking cool. And so I think it's, it's pretty awesome. You know, being able to dress up, but also be tough as nails. Like yeah. uh, you mentioned Alex Morgan is one of your clients. And yeah. honestly, like she is one of the um, most prominent people I can think of who really embodies that badass on the field, also okay. badass fashion wise at the SB. Yeah. That's incredible. Like so much of that is shaped through the work that you do. So yeah. And it's great. Like with her, for example, we'll just, you know, out of fitting, I'll roll in a rack of clothes and we'll try on everything. And it's awesome because you get to like play dress up and have fun and then throw your hair like the next day, throwing her hair in a ponytail, strapping on, you know, her cleats yeah. and just getting out there and getting after it. It's it's cool. And like you said, it's really important for young girls to uh to see the importance of that. You don't have to be one or the other. I think having assisted for so long and being able to see what these other women had been doing and creating a business out of, you know, styling, doing it on their own. And granted, we have agents that help us get our work, but you are your brand. You are an yeah. individual entrepreneur. So um, I always knew that I wanted to work for myself. I'm not the type that can have a boss, I'm not you know, for conflicting reasons, just because I have such big ideas and like, I know what I want and, um, being able to be responsible for that is just so exciting to me. It was risky. So when I was assisting, I still went back to a magazine. I ended up going during that time that I said I was assisting Silas back and forth in LA and New York. I did go and work for Marie Claire. Um, and that was kind of like, I don't want to say the nail in the coffin because that sounds so negative, but it almost just solidified that I want to be working on my own. Like I'm ready to now take that leap and not assist anymore and really put myself out there and show people and show the fashion industry really what I can do and my ideas because I had this strong desire to style athletes and that be my my thing it was it was risky because it wasn't a thing you know years ago six seven years ago that people were getting dressed up or people were even paying attention to athletes male or female you know and what they were wearing and now athletes are celebrities in their own right you know So most challenging to date would probably have been COVID, to be honest with you. It changed a lot um, in the fashion industry or just the entertainment industry. I mean, everyone's lives in general, but the entertainment in industry in, in particular, because people weren't going to, um, you know, in-person events. Yeah. Forget it. In 2020, nothing was happening. So for me, that was a huge challenge to actually go internally and reflect and see like, what do I want to do? Reassess my career because I had all of this time now that I wasn't able to work. Um, there were a couple of things towards the end of 2020 that were starting to happen virtually. Even now, still, there's a lot that happens virtually. So I had to kind of really curtail what it is I want to do, but it also gave me 
this push to be like, okay, this drive of, all right, sports and fashion is what you want to do. Go for it. Just, you have nothing to lose at this point. COVID happened. You lost, you know, yeah. a couple of clients or you lost, um, you know, the ability to work and do what you do. And for me, I go hundred percent. So my work, I feel like sometimes defines who I am, but I'm like, now you can really define who you are and what you want to do. So really pushing forward with sports and fashion, like it's solidified that, um, you know, that goal of mine. I have so many big ideas about merging the two and just making it more visible. Um, social media has come so far mm -hmm. that I think, um, you know, blending the sports and fashion in some sort of social media platform is a goal of mine, but also infusing this youth aspect to it, letting young boys and girls see that there's work beyond, you know, playing a professional sport like fashion or marketing or social media, you know, I think that just bringing it more to the forefront um, of, you know, people's everyday, you know, conversation. And no, I <laughs> think it's so important to highlight things that you can do outside of sport, but also maintain that love and relationship and kind of balance as you're doing. Um, you know, I think for women especially playing professionally sometimes isn't an option whether it be financially or safety wise like what kind of league you're in and, and injury yeah. and all that um so it's really great to like hear from someone that has gone on to do something great while still maintaining sports yeah. in their everyday life I, I wish <laughs> I had someone like you when I was younger too I know I wish I had someone like myself just showing like and now again there's so many ways that people can you know hear about this and so many platforms to talk about it I think that the conversation just needs to happen I was speaking to a GM of an NWSL team yesterday and she was saying like people don't realize especially young girls don't realize like you don't if you play sports you don't have to lose that love of sport once you graduate from college or once you graduate from high school and you're not going on to play your respective sport. There's so many different things that you can do from being an analyst now to yeah. you know, being a GM or, you know, essentially being a CMO at a, you know, professional sports team. Yeah. Being a coach, right. You know? Yeah. Even at the, like you said, the high school level, like I was so dedicated to sports in high school. If I had quit then, it would have been you know, so hard for me to like yeah. move on and not include sports in my everyday life. So yeah. you're so right. I think I'm in the mindset of like, you know, we both played in college. The next step was professional, but even at that youth level, yeah. it's like you play for years and then um, kind of just to stop outright feels so wrong. for I know. Out there. I know. You're like, how do I continue this love and this passion if I'm not playing? Yeah. But there's so many ways. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Course, anytime. I really appreciate it. Of course. I will speak to you soon. Yes. Talk okay. soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Basketball, probably. Nice. Always have a great fitting pair of jeans. Love. You can do anything with them. <laughs> my mom. My mother, yes. Oh. She came to this country. She overcame so much. She's bilingual, did so well in her career. Her and my dad built so much from nothing and were able to provide my sister and I with all the opportunities that they didn't have. So I'm thankful and very inspired by, by her. Mm -hmm.